Welcome to the Potter Blog site, October 27, 2014. The Department of Defense says Ebola is aerostable. They've made that statement in a broad agency announcement they put out on Friday. And the announcement was put out by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. Now we've summarized the announcement on our webpage and uh, we have a link to it so you can look it up yourself and read through it. It covers a lot of stuff, but we focused in on the most interesting aspect or most immediately important, and that's the aerostable aspect of Ebola. And when you read through this document, you can see that their fear is, is that uh, Ebola will persist in sewer systems and be a long-term contagion in sewer systems. Now here's a direct quote from the uh, announcement. And this is from DITRA, Defense Threat Reduction Agency. It says, Ebola is aerostable in an enclosed control system in the dark and can survive for long periods of for long periods in different liquid media. And specifically, they want analysis done on uh, its capability to persist in sewage systems, in airborne, waterborne, and biofilm form. And when you think about a sewer system, obviously they're closed. Uh, they have some sort of constant level of humidity and generally temperature uh, constant. And obviously no sunlight. So you have the three combinations that allow Ebola to persist. And uh, that's what this broad agency announcement's about. They want answers within the next three to six months uh, looking specifically at this risk. Now, if you think about how our sewer system works, you know, somebody with Ebola has diarrhea, uses the toilet. Uh, when they flush the toilet, uh, part of what's in the uh, toilet aerosolizes and goes up into the air of the bathroom. If you inhale that, then there's a, a, a strong potential to uh, get Ebola. Uh, as it flushes down the toilet into the sewer system, obviously it goes in the dark where sunlight no longer kills it, but as it's splashing around the sewer system, it also is aerosolized. And as it's in the water, it's protected too, and can potentially infect in the water. But uh, more so in sewer systems, there are these biofilms. Uh, some people might call them slime. But uh, you know, they're the persistent stuff that coats things in the sewer system that uh, detergents and cleaners and stuff basically don't eat through to kill what's in them. So the dangers of this are multifold. Uh, one of the first ones that comes to mind is SARS, Severe Q Respiratory Syndrome. It spread in Hong Kong in the Amoy Gardens high-rise apartment via a very similar plumbing-related infectious route. Uh, basically people who had SARS were uh, flushing their toilets and it was spraying down through the uh, sewer system and coming back up as an aerosol through uh, uh, different drains. Yeah. Second is, is that CDC currently encourages untreated Ebola waste discharges into sewer systems. Basically CDC says, ah, just dump it in the toilet. Don't worry about it. If you look what's just happened in New York City, Dr. Craig Spencer has already potentially infected the New York City sewer system because he had diarrhea and fever prior to going to the hospital. And as such, sewers may be a recurring source of Ebola infection. Now, this of course draws into question if the Defense Department's going to spend all this money, yet CDC has been assuring people that Ebola cannot be spread via air, water, or sewer. you got to wonder what's going on. So Dietra put out this announcement, and they want answers in three to six months. So they're wanting really rapid-fire answers to show uh, the level of importance here. And uh, one of the really interesting parts of this is, is they're looking for genetic markers of weaponization. Uh, they want to know, you know the genetic changes that elucidate persistence on surfaces. So somebody sneezes Ebola, where it flushes up out of the toilet and it gets airborne and then eventually it precipitates out of the air and lands on a surface. What key genetic aspects of Ebola allow it to persist long term on surfaces? So those are biowarfare markers. That's one of the things one might look for to indicate that uh, a version of Ebola is uh, a bioweapon, man-made, or, or whether it's natural. 
but it gives you an idea of how much further the risk is. Now, interestingly enough, in the same solicitation, DITRA announced that they're going to use a NATO biowarfare Ebola simulation to predict the flow of Ebola in Africa. But they need Africa specific information. So and we'll cover this in a separate video. But uh, basically, at some point, NATO decided they needed to defend uh, Western Europe against the Russians using Ebola, and they needed to figure out how people would spread it in Europe. They're going to use that same tool in Africa. Now, as we've reported in previous videos, the U.S. Army says that Ebola has an airborne stability similar to influenza, and that winter weather conditions may allow it to spread. Yes, well, you know, that is outside in sunlight. If it's the proper temperature and humidity, Ebola will persist in the air. And uh, if people are sneezing and coughing it up, there's a very strong potential that it will spread in, in ways that will, that will make uh, influenza look like child's play. Now, we're not sure this is going to happen, but the, the potential is strongly there. But based on this uh, research document, it's uh, very clear that... Uh, the Defense Department sees this risk even greater in sewer systems because the sewer systems are dark, they have the right temperature and humidity, and they're constantly aerosolizing what's in the water, and the biofilms make this stuff survivable. You would not want to be a sewer worker, and you wouldn't be want, part, want to be part of the same sewer system as somebody who has Ebola. So it draws into many questions, especially the uh, quarantine risk. I mean, if we, uh, if we let people self-quarantine in their homes and then they get sick and contaminate the sewer system and then go to the hospital, you know, that may be too late. All the sources and links are available here on our website. And uh, we'll have a follow-up video on the uh, NATO biowarfare simulation for Ebola.